time to jump into chapter two. So chapter two, I set up to focus on some of the most popular current frameworks that schools and teachers have used with technology. And what I found in my research is that a lot of schools are frustrated by them because it's not an exact fit. If technology is a tool for learning, learning first, technology second, then why are these frameworks so focused on the technology over the learning? So I tried to break them down a little bit because there are good pieces in some of these frameworks and things that help to inform us, but there's also pieces where there's a little bit of holes and I wanted to discuss those and how we try to fill those with the triple E. So the very first framework that um, the book talks about is TPAC. So I know you can't see it very well there, but you can see it in the book. And TPEC is what I mention a lot is a conceptual framework, meaning it's this idea in the clouds. So it's this idea that we should have technological content and pedagogical knowledge all coming together. And when it comes together, then bam, you get the perfect lesson or the great unit um, with technology. The frustration over the years with this has been um, that we don't know what that looks like in practice. What does that look like, sound like, and feel like in practice? We're not exactly sure because TPEC wasn't created as a practical framework as much as a conceptual framework. I agree with the concept. As a matter of fact, the Tripoli was kind of based around this concept that you need um, the technology skills, sure, you need the know-how, and you need the content learning goals, which is to me number one, um, but you also need these pedagogical moves and skills, which I think we often ignore. And as you get further into the book, you'll find how important those instructional moves are to the success of technology. And I can't wait to talk about that further. Um, so for me, TPEC was a guide in the sense that learning goals should come first, our content goals should come first, and technology's there, but the pedagogy is the most important piece of that. But it's not the most practical user-friendly framework. So then we have something like TIMS. Um, TIMS is a framework that is a big rubric. Um, and if you go to the TIMS website, you'll see it looks at kind of the adoption and the comfort of teachers. And then you'll look and, and they'll have these different levels of, of kind of compliance with technology. And the goal is to kind of get to this transformative level, level this transformation level. Um, but there's a lot of things in the rubric. And some of the levels look very similar to each other. It's difficult sometimes to distinguish. And it's just a lot um, for a teacher who doesn't have a lot of time. So it's not that there's anything negative in this, but it's that it's, it's just a lot to go through. And the focus isn't necessarily on the learning goals. You'll never, you don't really see in the framework places where it says, and how does this affect the learning goals? And so you kind of forget about the learning goals and you tend to focus on the technology. The same is true with SAMR. Um, SAMR has this idea, you know, substitution all the way through kind of redefinition. And there's an emphasis that the best technology use is when you get to redefinition, um, when you're doing the big movie project or, you know, you're having the students build these amazing websites. Um, but what you find sometimes is that even some of those big projects um, and those redefinition projects aren't necessarily meeting the learning goals. They might be shiny and they might look good, but frankly, maybe you should have just written a research paper in Microsoft Word rather than having them make a big movie where they've actually learned less about your learning goals. So your learning goals really have to drive it. And um, it's concerning when the focus is just on how the technology is being used and not as much on the learning goals. I don't think that was the initial intention of models like SAMR. There's other ones like PicBrat and, and a few others, but how to teachers and schools tend to read it is you want to get to this redefinition level, you have to be doing big things with technology in order for it to be effective. And what we found in the research and I found is that that's just not the case. You can be doing little things with technology and have it much more effective than doing big things with technology. So enjoy chapter two. I look forward to your comments and I'll see you at chapter three.